Hi there, welcome to this video on what is MicroSAS. My name's Rick, I'm a MicroSAS founder. I've been through the whole process from idea all the way to exit myself, and I've actually scaled up apps to a point where I could quit my day job and focus on these MicroSAS apps. So I'm coming to you from a place of experience, and in today's video, what I want to talk about is the definition of MicroSAS, and then I want to get into some examples to really solidify that, and then we'll go through some benefits and drawbacks and how you can get started building your own MicroSAS too. So what is MicroSAS a definition? So I would term it as subscription-based software that solves a specific problem for a niche audience built by a solo founder or micro team without external funding. What does that mean then? So that means that just like big SaaS, where there is some software as a service, people are paying some money for it each month or every year. It's the same model as that, except instead of having all the different teams set up and a ton of funding up front and a ton of aggressive, high pressure sort of uh, targets to meet, uh, instead it's probably just a single founder or a micro team just with a, an idea of how they can produce some software to actually fix a problem that a niche audience is having. And that niche audience is too small for the big boys to bother with, so it's actually what we would call mini SaaS, micro SaaS. And it doesn't need any funding to get started, it just needs an investment in your time. Any software developer can do this, and this is what I'm passionate about, sort of getting across and, and letting you know now is that you could actually start your own micro SaaS today, you know, and just get started. And that's what this channel's all about. Anyway, let's uh, carry on and have a look at some examples of MicroSAS now. MicroSAS comes in multiple different forms. And the first form we're looking at here is the web app. So this is uh, the, probably the most, the mainstream one, the bread and butter. And uh, a lot of these are actually built just to scratch the owner's own itch. And as a result, they found that many other people had that problem as well. So Hype Fury is a, it's basically a scheduling posting tool for Twitter. Upvote is a user feedback product roadmap uh, that you can use for your SaaS apps or Microsoft apps. And Browserless is a, a web service basically for developers, uh, allows them to, to run uh, browser automations. And then we've got some browser extensions. I put my ones in here, so I've sold and exited from these now, but Merch Wizard and KDP Wizard, you'll find my full story in another video on this channel. Uh, I basically built those up whilst I was working in my day job to a point where I could, I could quit um, and built that up to about 10K a month. And then I sold that last year as well. And then we've got Closet Tools here, which is one of my favorite examples of a browser extension Microsoft. This guy, Jordan O'Connor, he basically just started uh, fixing a problem that his wife was having, which was a, a lot of time taken doing like repetitive tasks on a site that she's selling clothes on, which is called Poshmark. And he then productized the script that he'd written and built it into a Chrome extension. He's still a single developer working on it. And he, last I heard, he was doing about $35,000 a month. Let's have a look now at the next slot, which would be platform plugins. So if you're new to Microsoft, this may be where you want to start off. It's just an easy place to start. You don't have to do much in the way of marketing. You would fix a problem and people will be searching for that problem in that ecosystem store. Um, so for example, we've got uh, Super Lemon here is a Shopify plugin and that handles a real-time interactive chat on WhatsApp and people on the store can basically put this plugin in there, pay them their monthly fee, but they will benefit from those features. That was started just by two guys in India, and I think they were basically doing about 25,000 a month. We've got Slack plugins, we've got WordPress plugins, and people are earning a disproportionate income for the amount of effort they're putting in. Um, and I say the amount of effort, uh, you work an hour, and you get paid an hour in your day job or if you're contracting. But with MicroSAS, you have the ability to leverage your time and build into a product and you can get a disproportionate income from that. Okay, so next up, we've got some desktop apps. So these are across various domains. This is for Amazon sellers. Uh, desk time is just a generic sort of time tracking uh, desktop app. And then Text Expander. If you haven't got this, I recommend you check it out. Uh, it's a really good tool that I use all the time. It looks so super simple. And you think, I could write that, something that expands some text, some short code into something bigger than we probably all could. But there's actually a ton of features and a ton of things that you might not think about, the use cases and using it multi-devices, etc. Highly recommended. And that all started off, uh, you know, very small and, and grew and grew. So yeah, those are some examples of MicroSAS. And now let's get into some of the benefits. So you don't start at zero. 
every month. You start with the number of subscribers that you had last month. Hopefully, obviously there'll be a little bit of churn, but uh, basically your results compound over time. So as well as the app getting better over time and having more features, you're gonna have this subscriber base. It's also increasing hopefully as well. There's financial security from this predictable recurring income because you're not starting project work and starting at zero each month. You are, you basically have a passionate set of fans that are already, um, you know, passionate about your app and will happily keep on subscribing to that app. And then in terms of the startup costs, they really are minimal for microsas. If you are working in a big SaaS app, then you're going to have probably a ton of investment and uh, a ton of like pressure to to make it to certain targets and KPIs, but for Microsoft, it's really just a, a side project that you can start in your own time and there's minimal outlay. There's no inventory to pay for or office space or anything like that. You have a direct connection with your users. So um, quite often as developers are kind of locked away in the back of a room. And uh, with Microsoft, you have the opportunity to engage directly with your user base, which isn't as scary as it sounds. Uh, quite often people are, are very happy that you're solving a problem for them and they just want you to, to succeed and they want to give you more feature requests, more ideas. This is one of the, the big things really is uh, build it once, sell it to many model that we've got here. So instead of doing some work and getting paid for that chunk of work for the hour or for the day, we're actually going to build it once and sell it to many people. So if 10 people can use our app, probably a thousand people can use our app and they're all going to pay us a nice subscription income. These next ones are about freedom. So you get a lot of time freedom, location freedom, technical freedom and financial freedom. Those are, are, are really absolutely incredible freedoms. And once you've gone and made the jump from day job to Microsoft's founder and running your own business, it, it's incredible. And I can't ever imagine going back to a cubicle nation and a career as such. It's low risk to get started with Microsoft and there's potentially a substantial exit um, possible at the other side of it. If you build it to sell from the start, uh, then you can actually have a really substantial uh, exit based on uh, a multiple of your monthly or annual you know, net profits. Again, there'll be videos on all of this stuff on this channel. So if you want to hear more about it, then please like and subscribe. Let's get into the drawbacks. There's reliance on systems and platforms. If you build something like a, a Shopify plugin, obviously you're relying on Shopify doing well. And if Shopify, for whatever reason, was overtaken by another competitor and the user base started shrinking, then your user base is naturally going to shrink as well. It's going to be much harder to scale up your app whilst uh, your target audience is decreasing. Two, the book stops with you. So if something's tough, then you've got to, got to figure it out yourself or you've got to try and get somebody who knows how to figure it out and go, get it sorted. And there's no sort of, I'm going to go to my manager with this problem. Um, it's really, the, you know, the book stops with you, literally. Uh, endless customer support. That sounds worse than it probably is. I mean, in my apps, I was probably handling, I'd say about an hour of support every week uh, across two apps. Uh, very minimal once you've got it set up. And there's things that we can do to, to minimize the uh, amount of customer support and make sure that the customer satisfaction stays high. And then finally, copycats. Uh, so if someone sees you having success in your niche, they might think they can produce something similar and undercut you or produce something better in their mind. By the nature of software, they can see it. They can't copy and paste it, but they can potentially copy the idea and the implementation. And the best way to combat this is to make sure that your app has the, the best features. You're continually evolving it. You're listening to your user base and that you are responsive to support requests and you just basically build up a great reputation and you don't get into a race to the bottom on price. So we've been through some examples, some benefits and some drawbacks. Now, how can you get started you know, building your own microsas? So I have a video uh, which I'll link to here, which tells you, shows you how to go and build your own microsas in 10 steps. And uh, these are the 10 steps. Uh, I won't go through them. There's another video that goes through them at a high level as well. I'll link to that as well. Uh, so make sure you go and check that out. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can go onto my website. So that's rickblive.com and that's linked in the description below. And I've got a free download. There's a book that I've created, the Microsoft Handbook. It's 12 chapters, it's 100 pages long. And basically after I'd had my exit, I just scribbled down everything that I could 
Uh, it's all there available on the website, or you can download it as a PDF that you can read anytime, anywhere, any place, any device. Finally, uh, if you want to know more about MicroSaaS or passive income, or how to quit your day job or Chrome extensions, then this is the channel for you. So please subscribe and drop a like on this video. And then there's also our uh, Facebook group, which is the MicroSaaS Mastermind group on Facebook, which has a ton of like-minded wannabe MicroSaaS founders basically taking the first steps and it's a friendly community. There's no silly questions. And if you tag me in any questions on there, I will do my best to answer and give you uh, any tips that I can. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and uh, make sure you check out the other videos and I'll see you around.